have had so much rain and it's not like a downpour but it is a constant for the past three days and this is what my garden looks like so I didn't realize it but it looks like you see you can see where all this water is collected and actually over here there's also standing water over here so it looks like there's actually a swale that I didn't realize that goes diagonally through here and just look at all this water. It's just collected. My tomatoes are already starting to wilt. I am kind of, <sighs> kind of bummed. I don't, I don't even know what to do to save them at this point. I, I was thinking maybe if I toss some mulch on the rows where their roots are, maybe it could absorb some of this water up, but I don't even, I don't even know if that's gonna do anything. Those were actually the tomatoes I was really excited about getting to. So, there's still some water even down here. You can see where the water drained over. And this is actually better than it was earlier. It actually has drained considerably. Thankfully, I'm hoping that that's what will happen is that the water will just drain and Maybe I'll get lucky and they'll bounce back. I don't I don't know. But I'm I'm hoping that this rain slows down because uh <sighs> that's that's disappointing. It's just that's disappointing. So it looks like the middle section of my garden where the mulch pile was. Now this might the mulch might be hiding it. It could be pretty saturated under here as well. Um, but back here in the back corner where I had planted, I actually had planted corn the other day and it was popping up, it's popping up. And there's water, there's water all over here. And this is, so I guess this is another swale that comes through because it's just water all the way to the chickens. I had to move the, the, the chicken nuggets in Magnolia because they literally were in a puddle. I mean, the ducks weren't complaining, Magnolia wasn't complaining, but the poor chicken nuggets, they were, they were just like pretty pitiful looking. But you can see the corn that has been popping up. And I mean, so far it's, it's acting like it's okay. I'm hoping that it'll drain down and the corn will pop, well, will do good. We won't, we won't know. We won't know until, until it does or doesn't. So we'll just wait and watch and I mean, at this point, there's not really much I can do. It's, I can't reconfigure the garden where everything, when everything's already grown. We'll just have to let it continue and see if it drains down and bounces back. And then whenever we get to work out here, we'll just, we probably get a tractor and excavator and move the dirt. And we can probably, Davis and I were discussing about how we could possibly dig, uh, kind of modify the swales to where the swale goes around and we can kind of have the water drain away and around from here. So far, the orchard isn't acting too stressed out. So, and I don't know if maybe that's because the grass is there, I don't know. So, we'll see. Yeah, I know, Lexi's out. <laughs> Lexi has started getting out, so we're gonna actually be moving the chickens over to the other energizer. I'll just stay away from her, buddy. She won't step on your foot if you're not near her. So I gotta catch Lexi and get her back in. What you doing? Hi, Miss Thing. You don't belong out here. Hi, little Miss Thing. So I gotta put her back in with the other cows. They got plenty of grass in there. She ain't got no excuse for trying to get out. She just did it because it's wet and the fence is grounding out so it's not hitting as hard. So I wanted to see if I could get the pasture flock moved today, but it's already starting to drizzle again. And it's supposed to rain again tomorrow, so I'm glad that we at least had the break that we did. We had a few hours of sun. Well, I mean, it was partial, partially cloudy, so it wasn't like full sun hot, but hopefully that gave the pasture a little bit of time to kind of try and absorb what it came. But I think I lost quite a few tomatoes and possibly cabbage, but. The cabbage was an experiment, honestly, so I'm not too worried about losing the cabbage. 
okra. Okra and peppers are surviving, thankfully. We'll see how that goes. Um, my onions. My onions are in standing water. They're gonna possibly rot. It is what it is. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I was really hopeful this year, but maybe there's gonna be further reconfiguring before I really get my big garden. And uh, we'll roll with the punches. We'll figure it out. Maple, our goat, likes to stick her head through the fence to get the grass. So I don't know if you guys can see, but I got sick and tired of it because not only is it kind of, she gets trapped. She gets trapped because her horns are just right. She can slip through it, but she can't get her head out. And she gets trapped and she's coyote bait at that point because there's nothing to protect her from getting got by a coyote at that point. So, this was my solution. Hi, stickhead. I see you back there. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens when you can't stay in your paddock. So, I zip tied a stick to her horn, and it's it's got a gap between her head and her and the stick, so she's not worried about that. It's just on the horn, so that way, in theory, she'll try to stick her head through the opening, and the stick is wider than the fence opening. <laughs> what are you doing up there, buddy? What are you doing up there? You want, you want to see how we do it? Sure, let me see how you do it. Hurry, all I do is this. Look at you, monkey. If your milking stanchion is built just like it, you too can do it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> are you a monkey or a boy? I think you're a monkey. Not a monkey. No. Just a boy with sick climbing skills. Just a boy with sick climbing skills. <laughs> <laughs> I see Lexi already standing at the fence like she's gonna try and test it again. I need to test the fence and see what it's hitting at. With everything being more wet and the grass coming in, it makes it more difficult for the energizer to electrify the fence efficiently so it doesn't hit as hot. And she's standing at the fence. Yep, she's all the way back there at the fence line, acting like she's gonna try something. Sneaky. Poor Leon just touched the fence and didn't realize it was on. Are you okay, buddy? <laughs> baby. There you go. Come here, baby. <laughs> Come here, baby. Come here. I know. That's scary when you get shocked. Oh, watch the ant pile right there, buddy. Come here. Jump over. Come here, baby. It's okay, sweetheart. You're okay. I'm sorry. Here, let's test this fence, okay, buddy? You want us to walk with me? I'm not testing it. <laughs> You're not testing it? I wasn't going to ask you to test it. <laughs> test it with the fence tester. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm testing it with the fence tester, silly. Hi, guys. Hi, Axel. You handsome. You going to let me get those stitches out? I keep oh, forgetting to bring the tweezers out here. I got to get them out. All right, you going to stick it on the ground for me? I'll fence test Oh, you're going to test it? All right, go ahead and test it. Get back. All right. Ooh, that is weak. It's Point joking. nine. Yep. Let's check this, because this is really hot. I'll test it. Do I even test the wire or the poultry net? The poultry net. You put it on the poultry net. Oh, stick it on the ground first. Weird, it's not showing. It wasn't touching wire. 
Oh wow, that's not even there's not even a point in running this fence. And it's still <sighs> super hot. Point two. Wow. And that is super hot. Mm. That's getting super. It's not even. It's not even worth running the fence at that point. Might as well just take the fence off if it's only hitting but at point mama, two. But mama, it it hit me really hot. Yeah, I know. I mean, we'll leave it running just just Let in me case. Get this Yeah, the wire should be hitting at point nine. Yeah. It's just because it's wet and the grass is growing up around the base of the zero, poultry net. It's going through 0 0.7. I mean, the only thing I could think of is there is some grass right here at this fence section that I could cut down, but it's maybe it would help a little bit. It's just this little clump right here. I think I'll try doing that. Annabelle is uh, bagging up. She's starting to thicken up. All right, Axel, I'm coming through, buddy. Hey, Annabelle. Just checking you, baby. Look at that udder. Yeah, she's starting to fill out. She's even sticking out the back. And another thing is she's not as wide. She's normally very, very wide. Like, if you look at her stomach, normally she's really protruded out. I think she's going to go very soon. So aside from the negativities of the flooding, speaking of flooding, you should see it over on the coast right now. Oh my gosh. They're literally having to pull cars out of water. It is flooding so bad. Hi Luke. Hi buddy. But on a positive note, look what's at the top of our banana tree. That is a blossom coming in. We're gonna finally have bananas on our banana tree. I've never been able, I've never gotten bananas from a banana tree, so I'm really, really excited. And maybe it's all the rain. Maybe they're liking it. I've heard that they like, they like a lot of water. They don't like standing water, but they like a lot of water, so maybe that's why. But, oh God. It's just a lot of flooding. It's a lot of flooding. Well, I think Maple's complaining that she can't stick her face through the fence now. She's yelling at me. <laughs> so in light of the flooding and the impending rain, um, garden tour might not happen this week. I'm gonna wait and see if this recovers and I'll give you guys an update. Hopefully the rain drains and I don't lose half my garden. It's gonna be really disappointing because we've worked really, really hard. So we'll see. I'll watch and wait. Do our best. Hopefully we can reconfigure the garden down the road whenever we get the uh, machinery out here and maybe maybe fall gardening will be, I mean, in the winter when it's not raining as much, I'll be much better then. So we'll have a fall garden, but maybe a summer garden isn't gonna happen.